I'm understanding why rocks fall so others fold or make deformation fabrics like this. We need to think about rheology. Now, rheology describes the relationship between the response of a material and the forces acting on it. In other words, the stress. It's important in structural geology and tectonics and in the manufacture of confectionery. But more of that later. But rather than simply try and squeeze rocks like this under geological conditions, we can use everyday materials and some simple experiments to illustrate some of the concepts that are important in rock deformation. Now, we're going to start off thinking about, about faulting, and then we'll come to creep processes. But we'll start with the faulting, and let's put these books to work. So this is a classic slider block experiment. The drawer is going to act as a slider block. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and pull the block by extending this elastic band here. And this will measure how much resistance there is to slipping on this surface. In other words, it's a representation of the shear stress at the point of slip initiation on the surface in here. So that's what we'll do. And we're going to impose a load down in the box here to see what the relationship between the shear stress and normal stress will be. We'll be able to vary that vertical load, in other words, the normal stress, by adding weight into here. We started off with a hefty PhD thesis, and then we'll add some other things, another PhD thesis, and these classic, classic structural geology texts, which will impose a greater normal stress. Let's see what happens. Okay, so here's experiment run one with one PhD thesis. Let's see how far we have to extend the green band before slip occurs. Okay, it's occurred. Okay, so we've got a marker here where the first experiment got to. Now let's try the second one with two PhD theses. Okay, it's slipped. Let's put the marker down for that one. Right, let's put the uh, structural texts in, shall we? There we go. Let's see what happens now. We've got our marker here. That's our first point. That's our second point. Now experiment three. So here we go. Pass the pink one. Right up to here. Right, let's put our marker down and see what we've got. So there is our final marker for our third experiment in here. The result of experiment one, experiment two, and experiment three. So as we've increased the normal stress by piling on theses and textbooks into our slider block, we've had to extend the elastic here, increasing the Shear stress acting on this surface until the point of slip. So there's a relationship between the normal stress and the shear stress. And that will be dependent, of course, on the ability of this surface to slip. In other words, what the frictional resistance is here. So the coefficient of friction will be an important control, as well as, of course, the load system in here, in determining whether this slip surface will indeed slip. Well, actually, there's another reason the rocks find it harder to deform with depth. So here's some crisp bread. Well, let's break it. And now this single piece of crisp bread is crisp bread plus fracture porosity. This is a volume increase. And for rocks in the earth, this must act against the vertical load, the pressure. So it's harder to create fracture porosity with depth. Well, it's not just pressure that increases with depth in the Earth. Temperature also increases with depth. So let's explore how temperature controls how materials deform. And we'll start off by substituting our rocks for butter. And we'll start off with some butter fresh from the freezer. Let's see what happens when we try to deform that.
Okay, so it breaks. So you'll guess what the next experiment is. Now we'll take some butter that we've left at room temperature for a while and see what happens when we try to deform that. So the response of the butter depended on its temperature. The same is true for rocks. Both have got a temperature dependent rheology. We're talking about viscosity. So how does viscosity vary between different materials? So this syrup is a viscous fluid flowing under its own weight. Viscosity is a fundamental physical property of materials. It's the resistance to deformation in time. It reflects the ability of stuff to flow. The units are pascal seconds and the differences between materials we're interested in are measured in orders of magnitude. This syrup has a viscosity of around one pascal second. Water, on the other hand, has a viscosity of around 10 to the minus three pascal seconds. Cooking oil, 10 to the minus two pascal seconds. And you can see qualitatively the difference in viscosity between a ripe camembert and some cheddar cheese. But materials that appear solid to us also flow over time. Glaciers are obvious. We can walk over them and yet they visibly flow over months and years. Glacier ice has a viscosity around 10 to the 12. Mantle, on the other hand, has viscosities between around 10 to the 20 and 10 to the 23. In rocks, it's the contrast in viscosity or apparent viscosity that we detect in the structures expressed qualitatively as competence. Here it's the granitic layer that is deformed with a higher viscosity or competence relative to its surroundings. Okay finally some confectionery as promised. This is the classic Mars bar experiment where we'll take a Mars bar from the freezer and contrast its deformation with that that we've taken from room temperature. A Mars bar is a rheological multi-layer. So let's take a Mars bar from the freezer. It's really hard to deform. But all layers have fractured the chocolate, toffee and nougat in one single snap. Now let's repeat the experiment using one at room temperature. So the chocolate and nougat have snapped, but the toffee still has some strength, not much, but it continues to creep, and only there does it snap through. So different responses. So we've seen how materials yield in different ways, depending on the composition and temperature. We've also looked at how faulting is sensitive to the burial conditions in the earth. So given these variations in nature, it's perhaps not surprising there's such a wonderful array of deformation structures that are found in nature.